morning boys and girls, it's Friday, it's May 1st. I'm gonna do a story today about ducks and ducklings. It's not the exact same duck or duckling that we'll be reading about, but the story is very famous. These kind of ducks are called wood ducks. There's the mama with the baby on the back. And this story is about a mama and a daddy looking after their babies and finding the best place for them. So this is from in honor of Mother's Day. I looked around my house to see what other duck things I had and I found this, which is a little wooden duck that I made when I was in middle school. I made this duck in 1973. So I'm gonna let you and your parent figure out how old that is, but I made it when I was in middle school. And my mum, my mother, Mrs. Pat Williams helped me draw the duck because I didn't know how to draw very well. So she helped me design it. And then I found my little glass duck, little glass duck that came from Venice, Italy. My sister bought it for me. Is it beautiful? From Venice, Italy, it's made from Murano glass. And so I have that in my house. Those are the duck things I have to share with you. The story we're going to read, it's a very famous story called Make Way for Ducklings. You can see that this book is very old. My copy of it is very old. The original story was written in 1941 and it won a Caldecott medal the following year for the illustrations. So it's 1941, it makes it 79 years old, the original story, which means if it were a person, it would be a grandparent or possibly even a great grandparent. So the story's been around a long time. So you can see that my, my book came from another library in New Jersey. But books, if you like to collect books and you haven't got one and that's the only place you could get it, it's a good place to get it from. All right, so we're going to read Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey, published by the Viking Press originally in 1941. He wrote lots of other books. Blueberries for Sal, One Morning in Maine, Time of Wonder. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were looking for a place to live. But every time Mr. Mallard saw what looked like a nice place, Mrs. Mallard said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes in the woods or turtles in the water, and she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles. So they flew on and on. I'm just going to check. You can see the pictures where I hold it. Yes. Flying over the land. Notice that there's not a lot of colour, it's just in this brown sepia tone because it was too expensive to make picture books in colour back then. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice pond in the public garden with a little island on it. The very place to spend the night, quacked Mr Mallard. So down they flapped. Next morning, they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond. But they didn't find much. If you look at the pictures carefully, you can see a lot going on in the park, a lot of people sitting, reading books, enjoying the outside. Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was pushing a boat full of people and there was a man sitting on its back. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mallard, being polite. The big bird was too proud to answer, but the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water. So the Mallards followed them all round the pond and got another breakfast, better than the first. Can you see what kind of bird it is? You know what that bird is? I'm sure you do. Did you guess right? It's a swan, but it's not real, is it? That's why it wasn't, didn't answer him. I like this place, said Mrs. Mallard, as they climbed out on the bank and waddled along. 
Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings right in this pond? There are no foxes and no turtles and the people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Good, said Mr Mallard, delighted that at last Mrs Mallard had found a place that suited her. But, look out, squawked Mrs Mallard all of a dither. You'll get run over. And when she got her breath, she added, oh, this is no place for babies with all those horrid things rushing about. We'll have to look somewhere else. So they flew over Beacon Hill and round the state house but there was no place there. There's too much town, isn't there? Too many buildings. They looked in Louisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in. Then they flew over the Charles River. This is better, quacked Mr Mallard. That island looks like a nice quiet place and it's only a little way from the public garden. Yes, said Mrs Mallard, remembering the peanuts. That looks like just the right place to hatch the ducklings. So they chose a cosy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nest. And only just in time, for now they were beginning to molt. All their old wing feathers started to drop out and they would not be able to fly again until the new ones grew in. It does look like a perfect little spot, doesn't it? But of course they could swim. And one day they swam over to the park on the riverbank and there they met a policeman called Michael. Michael fed them peanuts, and after that, the mallards called on Michael every day. After Mrs. Mallard had laid eight eggs in the nest, she couldn't go to visit Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. She moved off the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count the eggs and make sure they were all there. Can you count the eggs in the nest to make sure there are eight? One day the ducklings hatched out. First came Jack, then Cack, and then Lack, then Mac and Knack, and Whack and Pack and Quack. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings and it keep them, kept them very busy. One day, Mr. Mallard decided he'd like to take a trip to see what the rest of the river was like further on. So off he set. I'll meet you in a week in the public garden, he quacked over his shoulder. Take good care of the ducklings. Don't you worry, said Mrs Mallard. I know all about bringing up children. And she did. You count to make sure there are eight little ducklings left. She taught them how to swim and dive she taught them to walk in a line to come when they were called and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels When at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said one morning, come along children, follow me. Before you could wink an eyelash, Jack, Cat, Lack, Mac, Net, Whack, Pack and Quack fell into line just as they had been taught. Mrs Mallard led the way into the water and they swam behind her to the opposite bank.
There they waded ashore and waddled along till they came to the highway. Oh dear, is this going to be a problem? They can't fly yet, can they, the little babies? So what have they got to do? Somehow they've got to get across that busy road. Mrs. Mallard stepped out to cross the road. Honk, honk, went the horns on the speeding cars. Quack, went Mrs. Mallard as she tumbled back again. Quack, 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 went Jack, Cat, Lack, Mac, Nack, Quack, Pack and Quack, just as loud as their little quackers could quack. The cars kept speeding by and honking, and Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings kept right on quack, quack, quacking. Look how flustered she is, flapping her wings at all those cars. They made such a noise that Michael came running, waving his arms and blowing his whistle. Think he's going to help them get across? He planted himself in the centre of the road raised one hand to stop the traffic and then beckoned with the other the way policemen do for Mrs Mallard to cross over. As soon as Mrs Mallard and the ducklings were safe on the other side and on their way down Mount Vernon Street, Michael rushed back to his police booth. He called Clancy at headquarters and said, there's a family of ducks walking down the street. Clancy said, family of what? Ducks, yelled Michael, send a police car, quick. Now he's gonna get his friends to help. Working together. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallard had reached the corner bookshop and turned into Charles Street with Jack, Cat, Black, Mac, Nack, Quack, Pack and Quack all marching in line behind her. Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill said, Isn't it amazing? And the man who swept the street said, Well now, Ain't that nice? And when Mrs. Mallard heard them, she was so proud, she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle. That's how your, your mummies and daddies feel about you when you do something that makes them proud. And you behave nicely in public. And you do things nicely. When they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was the police car with four policemen that Clancy had sent from headquarters. The policemen held back the traffic so Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings could march across the street. So you can see that they're very, the ducklings are very tiny in this illustration, but if you count them, there's still eight. None of them have gotten lost because they're all paying attention. Right on into the public gardens. The last little one stepping up the step there, up onto the path. Inside the gate, they all turned round to say thank you to the policemen. The policemen smiled and waved goodbye. When they reached the pond and swam across to the little island, there was Mr. Mallard waiting for them, just as he had promised. The ducklings liked the new island so much that they decided to live there. All day long, they follow the swan boats and eat peanuts. You see them all in the water by the boat, by the tourist boat.
and when night falls, they swim to their little island and go to sleep. Uh, until the, it looks like a night photo, and if you count the ducks, there are eight. And that's the end of Make Way for Ducklings. So that story took place in Boston. So the, the author's telling you about all kinds of different places, famous places in Boston that, that if you've ever been to Boston um, or you ever go to Boston, you could go and have a look. And I think if you, if you uh, look up some information about this book, you'll find that they've made a special statue of the ducks with all the little ducks following behind. Um, and you can see that in Boston. You might be able to look that up on the internet with your family to see the statues that they made. All right, hope you enjoyed Make Way for Ducklings, um, the first of a few Mother's Day stories that I'm going to read over the next few days. And I hope you have a nice Mother's Day with your family or Parents' Day, whatever it is you celebrate. Goodbye. <laughs>